my name is Kurt and today I've decided I'm going to talk to you about apertures. So an aperture is a thingy made up of several blades that when the blades move they open or close a circle and that in camera lenses lets more or less light in, essentially doing the same thing as the iris in your eye. Now, like I said, it lets more or less light in but it also has another important feature in that it changes the depth of field of said photo. Now most people understand why closing an aperture dims a photo because obviously making a smaller hole for light to get through lets less light in. But less people understand how it changes or why it changes depth of field and that's what I'm going to explain. But before I do, if you're not into photography you might be wondering what depth of field is. It's basically how much of a photo is in focus. To demonstrate this, here's two photos exactly the same. The only difference, one shot with a wide aperture, the other one shot with a small aperture. And you see both the photos, the mugs in focus, however the one on the left, the background is far more blurry than the one on the right, and this is because it has a wider aperture. You could say that the one on the left has a more shallow depth of field, while the one on the right has a deeper depth of field. So why does this matter? Well first of all, having a lens that has a wide aperture value is attractive because it lets more light in, which is very useful in low light conditions. But secondly, having a wide aperture is very attractive to photographers because of the shallow depth of field. It's very useful if you want to isolate your subject. So for example, in this photo you can see how betrayed and lonely I feel as my housemate eats the last banana. Okay, maybe that was a bad example, but you get the point. So how does the aperture actually change this? Well, before I can go into that, uh, we need to go over some basics of how lenses work. Now I am sim going to simplify this significantly for your and my sake. Well, if I'm going to be honest, it's probably, probably more my sake. So, in modern lenses, they're made up of multiple elements and it's very complicated stuff when you're looking at high-end lenses. So, as far as we're concerned, I'm going to be representing a lens by this simple symbol. So, you probably know that glass can bend light, if you've ever seen that Pink Floyd um, album cover art. So, with the shape of a lens, uh, light that passes through the centre doesn't bend at all. However, the further you get to the edge of the lens element, it bends more and more. The focal length of a lens is how far behind the lens light that enters the lens parallel focuses to a point. Anyway, here's the basics of how a lens forms an image. So over here we have an object, in this case a tree. Uh, we also have the lens and then we have our camera sensor that the image is going to be projected on. The reason that we can see the world around us is because everything emits light that originally came from the sun or some other source. We can think of this as every tiny part of the tree emits light in every direction in a 3D space. A lot of the light misses the camera lens altogether, but that's not of our concern. As we discussed earlier, the light that passes through the centre of the lens doesn't bend, but the light hitting near the edge of the lens does bend significantly, and if the tree is in focus, uh, then the light will bend so that the light emitting from one point of the tree is focused to one point on the camera sensor. Repeating this process, you can understand how an image is formed on the sensor. Notice that it forms upside down. Okay, so that's all very well and good, but where does the aperture come into it? Well, normally in a camera lens, the aperture sits somewhere in between the elements in the lens, but I'm just going to be drawing it behind the lens. So it's pretty simple to see how the aperture reduces light. Uh, so when we close it, it stops some of the light from reaching the sensor. But why would, why would the aperture affect depth of field? Well, to explain it, we need to understand what's happening to things out of focus. So this time, instead of using an object as a tree, we're going to be using a, a point source of light. So you can think of this as a little LED light in a very dark room. So when you take a picture of it, all you, do, all you get is a little speck of light surrounded by darkness. So drawing what is happening is very much the same as before with a tree. But what happens if it isn't in focus? Well, it becomes blurry, and here's why. So instead of the light meeting on one point of the sensor, it is spread over an area on the sensor. There's two ways in which this can happen, the way I just drew it, or it can happen where the light actually crosses over itself before it hits the sensor. It depends on whether you're, whether you're focused in front or behind the light. Either way, the result is you get a soft ball of light instead of a little speck. What is interesting about this is that the light that went through the very centre of the lens is still hitting the correct spot on the sensor even when it's out of focus, but the light hitting off centre are the ones that miss, with the biggest offenders being the light that hits the very edge of the lens. So you may have guessed what I'm about to say. When you close the aperture, it removes the light that was hitting the edge of the lens first and then it closes in towards the center, which means by closing the aperture it reduces blur, or means that objects in your photo don't become blurry as quickly as before. Okay, well, I now hope you understand why the aperture affects the depth of field in cameras. But before I go, I want to leave you with just one last thought and fact. 
So, the light passing through the centre of the lens is not bent, and if we close the aperture of the camera so much that essentially the only light that can get to the sensor is the light that is passing through the centre of the lens, that means two things. One is that, that, one is that technically everything should be in focus, and two, what's the point of having a lens, like an actual glass element, since there is no bending of light at all? Well, because of this, there, are a, there is a type of photography called pinhole photography. I happen to have a pinhole body cap. It is just a body cap that has a very small hole in it. I'm told that it is 0.02 millimeters in diameter. And here is a photo taken with it. As I said, everything's in focus. But as you might expect from such a simple lens, um, the images aren't very sharp. So essentially, everything and nothing is in focus at the same time. And with these cameras, because essentially they have such a small aperture, you need a lot of light or you're going to need a tripod and set up some long shutter speed photos to actually get the photos well exposed, but it is still interesting, interesting nonetheless. Now there's one last thing that I actually forgot to mention. So all that out of focus blur that we've been talking about, photographers call this bokeh. Um, and those point source of lights, which make those big uh, ball lights, they're actually called uh, pokeballs, uh, I'm sorry, bokeh balls. Um, now, it makes sense that those bokeh balls are round because, well, camera lenses are round and when apertures are fully open, they're round as well. However, if you think about it, there's situations when they wouldn't be round. So, because aperture, apertures aren't made with infinite, infinitely many blades, they start to represent the shape depending on the number of blades. So, hexagons is pretty common in bokeh balls because uh, six-bladed apertures is pretty common. My 50 mil is a five-bladed aperture, so it makes pentagons, as you can see here. But what's even more interesting is you can kind of make your own apertures by cutting shapes into cardboard and putting them right in front of the um, camera lens. So if you see this photo here, I've got bokey balls, bam, bokey stars, or oh, schnitzel. Hmm. Well, here's a drill, here's some annotations, like the video if you want. How about sharing it if you know someone who you think will find this interesting as well? Okay, catch you later guys. So, so an aperture is a thingy made up of several blades, and when the blades move they open or close a circle. So an aperture is 